As we made our way through the streets of Tombstone, it felt like it could have been 1880. Other than the modern clothing most of us were wearing, the town looked original. From stagecoaches to cowboys to saloon girls, Tombstone had it all. We were interested in one thing, the gunfight at the OK Corral, and we quickly found where to purchase our tickets. We made our way to the corral where animatronics reenacted most famous gunfights in American history. The gunfight at the OK Corral. The gunfight at the OK Corral occurred just two years after Tombstone was established. Over here it tells who they are, Tom McClory, Frank McClory, Ike, and Billy. So I think Ike was the only one who survived, and all four, the Earps and Doc, survived. Here, we entered a room that was ripe with history, and included some old Indian photographs. The Chinese were also very influential in Tombstone, with a population that had grown to over 200 in its prime. Tombstone also had a football team. We were making our way to Doc Holliday's room where Doc's girlfriend had come for a visit. Doc's girlfriend witnessed over 30 shots being fired before three men lay dead and others injured. This Apache woman's nose was cut off. Geronimo surrenders. Actual footage. Geronimo spent the last 23 years of his life as a prisoner of war following their surrender. Geronimo and the Chiricahuas, including the Apache Army Scouts that had helped catch him, were condemned to manual labor at army camps in Florida. Geronimo died in 1909, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Marshal White's office. Local jail. On the streets of Old Tombstone. There's Johnny Ringo. Yeah.
thieves and stagecoach robbers. I mean, we are horse thieves. Just for the Billy, hey, Billy, Billy, hey. Billy, Billy. <laughs> Nobody likes you. <laughs> well, what do we do now? It's simple, you moron. When New Yorks get here, we deal with them. What's wrong with you? You don't mean we're actually going to kill them, do you? Actually, Billy, see, we're going to do nothing violent like that. Okay. See, we're going to go down to the epitaph. All right. Put an angry card in the paper, big, fancy border. I get it. Uh, we're going to kill them. they got to pay for what they've done. That's a bad idea. We can just go back to Texas. They have great cattle in Texas. We'll leave when we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Cowboys were looking for a fight. Now you've got it. Pull up your hands, boys. We're here for your guns. Hold, I don't want no. that! No. I don't have a gun! No. Get the fire! No. You. Where are the holiday? You got a round left for you? Ladies are white. Y'all are daisy. You get Yeah, there's this one. I see you, boy. You feel me? Give me that gun. Yes, take it. You let me die. No, wait. Oh, Frank Cloud. Dead. Tom Cloud. Dead. 19 year old Billy Clank. Dead. That was it. Over before it ever started. Two months after this gunfight, first alert was ambushed outside the Crystal Palace Saloon. Three shotguns went off, but he still refused to die. Crippled up pretty bad, first wandered the West. Death found him in the battle in 1905. Not as lucky was Wyatt's brother Morgan. Shot in the back and killed, playing a game of pool up on Allen Street. Morgan died at midnight, March 19th, 1882. His brother Wyatt's birthday. Not 1887, the year this whole town began to fall apart. Two main causes of this gunfight died, hundreds of miles apart from each other. That summer, putting together a new gang in northern Arizona, Ike Clanton was shot and killed by a mail order detective. <laughs> Not long after that, a lifetime of drinking, smoking, and bad decisions caught up with y'all truly in Colorado. I don't care to talk about it. <laughs> Wyatt Earp was the last man standing. Wyatt spent the rest of his days traveling. He went from Idaho to Alaska, finally ended in Jazz Age Hollywood. Looking for another tombstone and a chance to get things right. He never did find it. When he died in Los Angeles in 1929, just ahead of his 81st birthday, his last word Suppose. Suppose. And that, folks, is our show. We hope you enjoyed made our way down to the Tombstone Epitaph. Felt like part of history. We left the main town and made our way down here to Boot Hill so we could see the graves just outside of Tombstone. Boot Hill Tombstone Cemetery. Graves of the Clantons and Marshall White. Three fingered Jack Dunbar. Shot by Jeff Milton. Murdered in 
believe the rocks were piled on to keep animals from digging them up. There's money on that one. George Johnson hanged by mistake, 1882. He was right, we was wrong. We strung him up, and now he's gone. The graves of Tom McClory, Frank McClory, and Billy Clanton. It says they were murdered in the streets of Tombstone. They tried to charge Wyatt and the Earps with murder. Let's go down here and see this one that's fenced off. Try to find out why. In memory of Frank Bowles. She passed by, remember that your so once was I, as I am you, soon you will be remembered. We're looking now for Marshall White, who was shot, killed by Curly Bill. The streets of Tombstone. Marshall Fred White died in 1880. Rest in peace, Marshall White. Here lies Lester Moore, four slugs from a 44. No less, no more. Here is another grave surrounded by a cage for whatever reason. Mrs. Stump, 1884. Maybe the family paid for the... Again, they had to worry about animals digging them up. Some unknown. Unknown, unknown. A lot of unknown, yes. Oh, yeah, look at this. It is so cool. Almost looks like a person standing there, doesn't it? This is different. Boot Hill, it was on a hill.